네, 이제 이거 할 건데 음, 중요한 게 뭐냐면 이 두께를 어느 정도를 그러니까 여러분들 네, 이런 거 보면 어, 그러니까 what does matter is first 그, so what is matter? So as you see that we first decide the, the dimensions of x and y and t. So x and where do you think x and y came from? So this x and y is actually definitely have a limit. What do you think? Which may offer you the maximum dimension of x and y. You go, x, y, and boy is good in the bell. Hang on, definitely. Your key size is a the, the dimension of x, y is definitely decided by the machine itself. You cannot make, you cannot cut any object that is larger than the machine itself and actually the more the more in terms of practical reason and then okay then how do you think that how the thickness the dimensions of thickness the dimensions of g the z how do you think the z is defined by what the opinion boy is from the bell you can add a lot of material using glue. So the material is almost limitless. It's just related to money. That's it. But how do you how do you decide the maximum thickness you can use? Manduliogohan 우리가 정할 우리가 정할 수가 있는데 그럼에도 불구하고 still we can actually we can decide the thickness of material as much as we want but still that is bounded by one thing. 근데 이게 뭐 때문에 제한이 돼요? 뭐에 의해서 제한이 될까요? 근데 이게 material만 가지고는 결정이 안 돼요. So this this uh, the thickness does not bound it by the material or machine. Of course, yeah, of course. Uh, machine is also the machine do the, the machine itself has a cutting depth, but still that's not really practical parameter. Rather, the more practical boundary of related to thickness, then drill be saved. It is solely uh, decided by actually the router bit. So let's take a look at about the router. So let's say that it be kind of a CNC router bit. So you could check about it. Uh, there are several dimensions and types. So it, it, this is one of the eight, this is kind of very typical router bit. And as you see that uh, it says OAL, OAL is overall length. And then you, this one CL, which is cutting length. This is the maximum depth you can use. And then uh, the SD is actually, this one is called shank diameter. And then let's say that this one is quarter inch shank diameter, which we will use. This one is very similar to uh, the 
the plus pen I have now. And then CL is actually one inch. One in inch is roughly three centimeters. So that's why the depth of this one is roughly three centimeters. And then that's why this one is roughly three centimeters. Uh, because we use, we, in general, we use a lot of quarter inch uh, router bit. Uh, then actually it has, a, uh, it has a one inch cutting length. If you, if, if, actually, if you take a look at about, uh, let's say the ball nose, but if you change the shank, shank is the thickness of the body of the router bit. If you change it to quarter inch to half inch, and then let's check, we are going to spider router bit and this one same thing but uh, this one is still a quarter inch i would really select half inch so uh, so this one looks like okay this one is half inch as you see the cutting length now is one and 16th inch. So it doesn't really go that high. Let's find another one. So what if, if you check half inch uh, down cut, then I check half inch shank. So this one is half inch shank, quarter inch. If you take a look at this one, this, the cutting depth is one and a half inch. So this one increased like four or five centimeters. So this one is much deeper. Okay, so uh, so material room, we have some centi So this one is actually MDF three ply of MDF board. So we are going to use this one. And one thing I need to tell you is that we cannot really use all the sizes of material. What I mean by is that, as you see that, uh, I don't know whether you see it. So uh, we need to attach this one on top of the machine space. So how, how we can hold it? So we are going to use screw bolt. So the, we kind of, we have to save some space for four screw bolt that goes the base material. So there is no general rule, however, I would left at least two centimeters. So I kind of, we need some space. So we kind of, so we need to kind of, we have to save some space for screw bolt. And then as you see that if, if, you, cut, if you want to cut this one, probably a router bit, we need to also save some space for router. So roughly screw bolt will take roughly and safely one centimeter. And our router bit also take one centimeter. That's why I want, I will save two centimeter from the boundary as a kind of like unused area. What it means is if you want to design a kind of 3D shape that looks like this size, you need material that is larger, about two centimeter offset larger than the actual object. But over the Saturday, screwdriver is centi, say Benoko, router bit and is centi jungle tasanka, is centi jungle offset the hasha there, well put up to guru. So that, that's how you can safely cut this 3D CNC material. So today uh, I'm going to uh, just kind of go through very quickly. I just covered it, I think several weeks ago, but just I'll just revisit so I can do it in a very quickly. So let's say that we are, I'm going to open Rhino. So we are doing a very simple thing. So let's imagine that. So uh, in this in this case, we are going to use ten by ten by, and roughly uh, twenty seven millimeter. So one hundred one hundred by twenty seven millimeter because this one is three ply of nine millimeter 
MDF. So I need to draw, so if you want to draw roughly 100 by 100, so let's say that if this one is your target object, you need to offset roughly 20 millimeter. So this one's supposed to be your material size. And then to draw the boundary of it, so I just draw a box and roughly our material is 27 millimeters. So this is the kind of the material boundary, including thickness. And I also want to move the left lower corner to zero because this location will be imported to the machine. So I want to include all the boundary area too. And today I just kind of draw something very simple. So I just kind of draw a surface in the middle. And then with this one, we can actually create the something very simple. So I just select one corner and then I just move it up. But in this case, I would not really increase at the end of this boundary. I just kind of give some margin. So even if your material is 27 millimeter, I would left a couple of millimeters just for uh, any, to observe any error in the middle. And I would to select another one here. I just kind of just design a very simple one, that's it. So let's just imagine that this surface is, uh, this surface is the one that we are going to cut. And as you see that this one is simply attached to at the bottom of the surface, but actually the space that, but when you think about CNC, the zero is not the bottom, the zero is actually the top. So I would start uh, this one actually from the bottom, top side of it. So then I have some safe space below. So that's kind of, this is just today's sample material that we are going to use. Uh, and then, uh, so I will have to go through what to prepare here, but as I don't know whether you remember, uh, last time we used the V carb in this machine, this one is tri version, which may have some error, but we will not have any error if you use licensed version. So let's say that uh, uh, we are going to use this one, but still the center surface is the one that we are going to use uh, for CNC cutting. So I just simply export everything. And then I save it as, so I just export, select it. And then I just save this one as uh, 3DS. And I just call this one CNC test Monday. Uh, so here's interesting part. So if you use pure polygons and preview, uh, you probably see some triangulation, for example, you have only two triangle. If I use in somewhere in the middle, if I preview, uh, still it has, uh, I would actually delete the boundary and I just have only boundary curve and this one. So, okay, uh, have a seat here. I just quickly demonstrate uh, the software tutorial of the CNC 3D cutting. Okay, so once I select it, uh, I just export to select it. And then I say uh, CNC test Monday. Okay, and then I will say yes. So again here, if I uh, put this, uh, I don't know, arrow in the middle, if I preview, then you probably see this kind of lines. If I do it more polygons and preview, it doesn't really have any changes. So I just, so I just kind of put it in the, but this one is a kind of showing you how smoothly you want to create the surface. And if you use more polygons, it's supposed, you're supposed to have more smooth surface versus on the other hand, if you use fewer polygons, you may have some crude uh, triangles but I just kind of set it in the middle and just press okay. So this one is saved. 
And then coming back to, and then here I would use we carve. And then I need to create a new material, which is, so roughly this one is uh, 150. So actually this one is larger than the original one. So I just say 150, 150, and then thickness is 27 and it's just say, okay. So this is kind of material that we prepared. And then once material is set, we need to import the 3D file. So to do that, go to file and import and 3D model. Last time we used actually vectors, but this time we are just going to import the 3D model. And then we import the CNC test Monday and okay. So now here, uh, it will be located somewhere, actually the lower left corner zero is actually at the middle of it. But if you just click position and import, it will automatically, uh, so this is what this is what happened. So this one is just roughly triangulated uh, 3D CNC surface, which we don't want to use. So coming back here, what I want to do is I would use rebuild and then I increase control point by probably 10 by 10 and then okay. Then as you see that this one is more smooth to surface. And now I will actually export this surface and I just resave it. And then I just kind of used, so now probably now you can see it now. So if you, put, if you in, decrease towards pure polygon, then you have just only one line. If you increase more polygon, it's, uh, still it does the same thing. So let's kind of export it. Okay, so I will re-import this one. Go back to file, import 3D model. This is Monday. So now you see kind of see this kind of triangulation. You just kind of click position input and import. But so now this is the triangulation of the mention icon. Then this one is uh, when we import it somewhere in the middle. If I do do increase more than you have see smaller triangle that's it okay, so in the brick curve the first thing we have to do is actually we have to remove some rough material so this is known as rough cutting so to do that coming back to toolpath and using this 3d rough toolpath and the thickness is 27 xy is zero is lower left corner and surface is zero. So this one is simply asking materials. And I just said, okay, so material is ready. And here the tool is actually, I'm going to use quarter inch uh, toolpath. This is the same toolpath, same tool we used before. And then the rest are, it's okay in that I simply calculate. And what you will see is that this one, will left some of the material, but it will kind of remove any unnecessary material in a crude way. So if you just go through it, it will look like this. So this one is simply rough cutting it. Uh, and then if you kind of just measure the time, it will take 47 minutes. So today what I'm going to do, I'll just go through this one and then you can stay here, but you don't really need to watch everything. And after doing this, what we are going to do is we are going to use uh, finish, finish cutting. So just click this one. And in this case, instead of using end mill, we are going to use bore nose. Bore nose is actually a drill bit. Uh, so this one is the end mill, which is the very sharp end and it will cut like flat surface. Uh, Instead of this one, we are going to use uh, this spider one known as bore nose cutting, bore nose. And then we are going to use quarter inch bore nose. So actually it will look like this and then it will cut like something roundy at the bottom. So by doing so, this can cut very smooth, clean, uh, kind of continuous surface. So we are going to use this bore nose 
And then, so I'll just use the default setting. And then there's two different way. One is, uh, again, you can use climb and conventional, but I just use climb for now. But the, the thing is, it depends on, uh, this one is kind of, this climb and conventional is actually decided by uh, this board knows will tell you whether this one is conventional or this one is down cut. So down cut may use actually conventional. If it is up cut, you can say, uh, you can say select different. And you may, it's kind of difficult for you to know whether, because anyway, that all the router bit is already coming out of a box. And then you probably don't know if this one is down cut or up cut. So you have a difficulty in selecting, should I use conventional? Should I use conventional or climb? Select, just select either one. And then once you cut it, if it cuts nice and smooth surface, it's okay. But if you select a wrong one, you will have a lot of kind of tiny, uh, dust will left here. And then in that case, you simply replace. So if you have, if you have some kind of dirt, kind of dirty kind of crude cutting, you simply switch to conventional, then it will be fine. So just select one and check the surface quality, cutting quality. And if it is bad, just simply replace it. So if you do calculate, if there's some error, if this one is this unlicensed version, but you'll be fine in the kind of uh, in licensed version. Another thing what we are going to do, so as you see that all this material will be cut out the mid range here. So we want to cut out this one out of this boundary frame area. To cut out the uh, frame, what we are going to do is we are going to use this profile cutting we used previously. And then just because we don't want to replace this end mill, we just simply use the same thing, ball nose, or you can actually change it to uh, end mill and then replace the cutting. And then you may add some tap. And actually uh, in this case, you may need to draw just a box, box around here. And then by using, and then you may want to uh, set, so seven is supposed to be precisely, precisely 75 and 75, and size is 100 and 100 and apply it. So this one is precisely located. And then using this curve, I may, you may want to add some tap because you want to left some material and close it. And then we will cut this one too. Then uh, this one is too low. Let's do one more time. So both, we are going to use boundary cutting. Uh, cut depth is supposed to be 27. And then we are going to add the taps, same location. And then if you apply, and if you do that, so now we will have this one having some uh, tap space here. And since we are using round cutting, it will have some another material, but that will be very thin. And we are going to use band so to cut out. So this is the kind of like the 3D surface that we are going to use it. And everybody, uh, so after finishing this one, Next week, we are going to use a vacuum forming machine using this CNC material. So vacuum forming machine need a mold to do that. So CNC vacuum forming. So CNC vacuum to use actually CNC vacuum forming machine. And then we are going to use this format. Me. 
Actually, this one says you can also use a 3D printed model ah, as a mold. Once the air has been removed from our finger, or manually, as shown, any action. Okay, so this is how it works. So you locate uh, some 3D printed model. Somewhere around. Okay, so you are going to locate this process, kind of model in the middle of the machine. On the settings program. Typically, the plastic is heated evenly, somewhere around 400 degrees. And then we are going to locate very thin plastic after on top of it. And then we will heat up this area. So it will become plasticity, it will become plastic. And then it will come down, then it will kind of melt it, and then it will have the shape. And a vacuum will suck any, any air in the middle. Then this very thin film will turn into the CNC model the kind of shape. And actually, this, this one actually says that you can use 3D printed object. But as you see that the temperature for this one is roughly about 400. And then once this kind of hot plastic, if it is overlapped on a 3D printed object, actually a 3D printed object will melt together and become stuck to each other. Oh, so actually this one is an example of it. So what happened is I use a vacuum machine to shape, to place this one here, and then I kind of use plastic on top of that, and if you do it, then you will have this problem. So you need to cut up some size area. So I will have this. And as you see that, do you see this kind of crease, some kind of folding? So what happened is that imagine that this one is turning this flat thin material into this. So actually, as you see that, just like origami, this is kind of something what will happen. So be careful about it. And then your shape is supposed to be something roundy and curved, the more roundy and curved, so-called it, it left the more, the less it has done this portion, it will be more smooth. So that's something you need to, but uh, you, you can actually learn by doing it. Okay, so that's what we are going to do today and next week. Uh, but next week, I will just show it during the class time, a little bit of time. So what you have to do is maybe from, Within two or three weeks, you reserve a time there and then you need to cut it. And then also, and then after CNC is completed, you need to reserve another time to use a vacuum machine. That's your exercise. All right, so let's switch to the makerspace. And right, then I will bring, I will just save this one to Google Drive. Then I will connect so before you come here. You need a 3DS file to test it. Okay, and then I want to test one more thing, which I will record from this cell phone from now on. And then I want to record. This is a cell phone. Recording in progress. Then I will switch camera. And 
the main thing. Okay, this one. Okay, so okay, now from you can see from this screen, uh, but that one is. Can you zoom in this my cell phone screen? 남은 씨그 남은 분제 카메라 요거를 할수 있죠 메인으로 볼수 있죠. 네 가능합니다. 네 오케이. 자 그럼 우리 절로 갑시다. 교수님 지금 마이크가 음소거 돼서 말이 안 들리는 것 같습니다. 아, okay. So the screw is supposed to go at least deeper than the middle of the material. So it's it shouldn't be something like this. So it's supposed to go go through the midpoint. 중간 이상 들어가야 돼요. 그렇게 해서 요 스크류를 고르기로 하고 and then actually it has a quite a volume. This will break up the material itself. Then actually the problem is not really breaking the material. It will lose the kind of holding power. That's the problem. So when you use, uh, when you use screw, when you screw you to any material, always drill first. And then when you actually select the drill bit, uh, the diameter of the drill bit should not larger than the body of the screw. Actually, this screw has a body and a blade that wrap around its body. But if, if you, your drill bit is larger than this body, this, uh, this blade will lose its kind of gripping power. So that's something you need to remember. So, well, would you hold it? And then, yeah. okay. So I locate this material. Then I'll just drill it first. And then when you drill it, uh, do not drill something like continue. And then, okay, I'll just kind of show how to use this one. So basically, you can just press it to drill it. And you see that this one is turning around uh, clockwise. And then actually, drill bit is also clockwise cutting. If you want, and then if you want to take it out, you can actually by switching this one back and forth you can reverse the kind of this location. Mm -hmm. And then this one is actually, you can actually select the torque of the drill bit. So it's a, if you do, if you use a higher number of it, then actually you can actually use a higher torque. 
uh, that will be problematic sometimes, but I will explain later. And there's one and two switch. To be honest, I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, so like when, the, when you drill it, do not just simply press it. The problem is all the cut it out, the kind of some powder material need to come out. Otherwise, mm. it will not really go well. So what I do, uh, okay. Uh, and then if you actually drill on a kind of raw material, as you see that this will move a lot. Yeah. To prevent that, one solution is kind of making a, some kind of mark here and then just press a little bit or use a rubber hammer to kind of to make a kind of little notch on top of the surface. And definitely when you drill it, instead of pressing it, I just kind of rotate one or two times and mark the location and then I just press it. And as you see that, it doesn't really go through that well because, because of this material. So once you remove it, then it will go easier and then remove it and then do that and then remove it. So I kind of, this one is done. And then bring another screwdriver. So you will always have two sets of screwdriver, a kind of like a power driver. So I just locate and then I just screw it. And then as I kind of push it through, because of the resistance, it will come up like this. Ooh. So in this case, release it and then do it one more time. And then just the, if it, and then you'll be fine. Okay. And I'll do the second drill. And then remove. And remove the material. And actually, something also you need to be careful about, care about is that if you actually over screw it, what happens is this metal blade will remove all the material in the hole. What it means is if you over screw it, Basically, you make a, this one works like drill bit, mm -hmm. and then it will not hold your material. Mm -hmm. So actually, you may not want to over screw it. And then if you use something smaller number, it will stop automatically. Mm -hmm. And, but the more important is, oh, in this, in case of drill, you need higher torque. But in case of screwdriver, I may want to use lower. Mm -hmm. And I'll just screw it. So what is important is try to feel the resistance and stop it before it over screw it. Like this, one, this one doesn't really work. This one's released by itself because we are using lower tool. So I'll turn a bit. <laughs> okay, remove the, some material. You may feel the resistance if you don't remove the wood material. And yeah, then, actually, <laughs> then actually you cannot even take it up because you're, it is stuck. Ah, uh, yeah. Then uh, reverse it. But before you do that, it's better, it is wise to remove material. Mm. Actually the drill bit will stuck in the middle of uh, material because of the dust. Uh, mm. the dust. And now you can screw it.
Ishan, you will do the last one. You can just take it off oh, instead okay. of reversing it. And you probably feel that once you remove the material, it's much easier to drill. Because of the dust. Yeah, because of yeah, that stuck uh, the all the drill bit inside the wood. Yeah, yeah remove material. Why uh, do not reverse it? Just you can still drilling it and then take it back. Yeah, okay, and then move it. Okay, the drilling and the okay, okay. So now you remove it from the rear. So no screw. Um, I can't find. You need to press it. This one? Yes, yeah, so you, you need to press the screw itself and drill it. Uh, That's done. Okay, you're set. Wait, wait, wait. Why don't I? Like, yeah, so you reverse it and release it and do one more. Okay. So uh, if, I, if, I don't feel, if I don't feel that it goes up, I should still reverse it. Uh, it's better because I kind of actually previously I see some gap below. Ah, okay. Actually, you see here that there's some kind of gap here compared to here. So I want to do oh. this one too. You see that coming down? All right, so screwing is ready. Uh, it will do hold it. So last time, actually, we used the board nodes with this. So I'll switch to end mill. So to switch end mill, I'm going to use this specific two tools. And I just hold this one here. In this case, as you see that you can cut only this much. Hmm. Then I will replace to this one. So I switch to end. So now I don't know whether you remember it, but first thing is I will kind of measure the highest point here, and then I'll set the x, y, zero here. Mm -hmm. I'll just locate this one in the middle. So two ton power, it is okay, and just reset that one more time. And then I will use uh, shop bot program. And then to move this one, I will just use this yellow button. And then you can actually move it X and Y. Yeah. And somewhere in the middle, I just set the X position. And then I'll clip uh, this 
metal clip on a chuck. This is called as chuck. And then I move a little bit left more. And then I set this one as x, y, 0 temporarily. And then here I set using cut and 0, g axis. And then enter twice. Okay, so now this, the height is set. And then now we need to set the X, Y orientation, uh, zero location. Okay, so roughly, I think now uh, this is okay for x, y, zero. So I just set this one as x, y, zero new the, the x y zero zero so now this one is all set uh, then i will bring the file we made Internet is not working. So now this one's okay. I'll just go to Hamilton. It may have it already. Uh, let me check. Uh, here is uh, I just reset the five five second.
Okay, so file is downloaded. So what we do is we open brick car here. And then we set a create a new file. And then the material is 150, 150. Uh, sickness is 27 and okay. Then we are going to import the file and 3D model. Then download since last Monday. And then we will just import it and just simply okay. So this one is located in the center. And then here we actually use first of all end mill. So I just draw it in rough cutting. So 27 in the top, material is set. And then we are going to use end mill quarter inch. So we are going to calculate. Then it'll look like this. It is gonna take a while. And the time will be roughly one hour. So this one is the kind of, the, uh, so far we can go. So I just kind of save this file and save tool fast. Desktop, I just say, you create a new folder. This is 24th, so this one day. And I just save it here, 3D dropping. And I also save this one so we can use it this Thursday. Then we don't need it. Then we are going to cut part and select the file and rough cutting and enter and twice. They will try to run. So I'll just, okay. So it just popped out. Um, and then also it will create a lot of dust. But you see that the people and the simply cutting all the way through until it is fired for one an hour. But instead of doing it, what I would love to is I just hit it, temporarily move it up. What I'm going to do is I will add this dust core head. And then I just, this one has a kind of like a magnet on the below, so it will automatically attach to like this. And if the bad side of it is from now on, it is kind of difficult to see the cutting. Mm. However, it'll prevent your lung and then it will kind of uh, it will kind of have less dust. And when you do this, anyway, it will come out a lot of kind of fine dust here. So I will just open this one because each major cutter is connected to this air filter. This one is kind of high have the highest quality filter. So if if you come in here, there's a remote or local switch selection, and I put it local and then turn it on. So we can suck air from here and then it will filter off. So I put it here. And then I will bring this one on the other side. Uh, because it will create a lot of dust, this vacuum filter is not the capacity of this vacuum is not enough. Mm -hmm. So we have a secondary filter that will collect all the wood dust and put it here. Not going through, just probably only the top parts only. Mm -hmm. And then I just turned it on. I, just re I will just rerun it. Close it. Pop up, rotting. I just resume. Okay. 
the system, they keep cutting it. So after one hour, a little bit then, on Monday, on Wednesday, we have continued to cut it. So in the meantime, coming here, a little noisy. And then come inside here. So you have to prepare this. And then I will teach you how to. So for cutting, you can use actually the table saw over there, or you can actually using this one, but I will teach this one next time. So for now, I'm going to have three of it, and then you'll have another three of it, and then there's another three for you. <laughs> uh, okay, so then as you, so I will kind of teach you about the wood glue. Okay, so this one is actually um, water soluble wood, meaning that if you just wash your hands, uh, this is one of the, probably one of the health system material you can use in this area. So just wash it out and it's done. And then uh, every glue has so-called working hour. So you need to, and this is another glue. However, we are going to use after we use of this one, Something you need to check. It doesn't have here. Okay. So English part is covered by sticker. <laughs> so I read Spanish, but we only read number only. What is said is 30 minutes. What does the, so what it means is for 30 minutes, it is okay to move, remove, whatever it is good. And actually this one is a little bit uh, softer glue than this one. So in this case of this, you have at least one hour or two. Uh, would you hold it for a second? I will yeah. bring the original. Okay. 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 So what the thing is that for a couple of hours, uh, it is okay to, it's really handy to work with. And then something with water, moisture, tissue, you can wipe out very nice and cleanly. So this is very convenient. But after one day later, this one almost become a stone. So this one is very strong. And this one, this one really glue your material. So actually, if you try to break it, glue part will stay, but the wood part will be break. That's mm. as, as strong. So something you need to be careful is, do not split this one on top of this carpet <laughs> or wood. Okay. Only work in this plastic material only. And you need to use this one. And we are going to use this metal clamp instead of plastic. And second thing. Uh, do not split it on the carpet or wood. Only work in the plastic area. And second thing is that this one is very cheap. Do not save it. So as you see here, every kind of glue that just come out everywhere. That's how you use this wood glue. You used to, uh, so basically what you have to do is you glue everywhere and not a single surface, you glue it on both sides. Mm. So that's how, otherwise, if there is some area that doesn't have a glue, it will just be separated. Mm. And you don't want to separate that after your, because in CNC, 
your object, you don't know where you need a glue or where you don't need glue. So there's glue everywhere. Okay. So how to do that when you have this one, it is supposed to have, you have uh, some nice uh, actually roller, but we don't have it. So mm -hmm. instead of doing that, we just use any leftover wooden material. It's supposed to be flat. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, so I tap it and just And squeeze it. And then be careful that you may sometimes, if you don't press it enough, sometimes if there's air, it will have pop out. And then your clothes will be dirty. So use, so it is okay for you to waste or a lot like this. So be careful about it. And then spread it. So again, that you spread everywhere. Let's do it here. I don't mind about the boundary area where we anyway, we are going to remove it. And after that, so you, we spread nicely on both area and then actually you glue it nicely. And let's do one more time. We can both just here. It's okay that we are going to fix later within one hour. Okay, after doing this, uh, you did I tell you about how to this clamp? Yes. So this will move around it when you move it horizontally, but you can actually click this way or click that way. 
Now, before you do that, release it as much as you can. And then I recommend to hold it at least four corner to hold it and then hide it. But I would not really press it hard at the beginning because why I'm pressing here, this one kind of comes out wider here. So I'll do, I kind of release it as much as you can do. And then I just kind of hide it here. And then I'll just kind of move it back to its mm -hmm. original location again, and then just hide it. And then do one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> Another corner. Oh. Uh, it's okay. I can pull back later. And then tie it over one more time. Okay, after doing the audio hold it. And after doing this, I'm using some dry towel. I just remove it. And then actually you can almost remove it very nicely. Then actually, you don't need to do anything, but if you do that, you may want to cut it later. So coming here back, just use another tissue, just remove it. So the more you remove it when it is wet, the next process will be much easier. And then particularly any leftover on the tool is supposed to be removed now. Otherwise, once it is dried, it is very difficult to do. And again, this will be all water soluble, so it will be removed very easily once you wash your hands. So this one is, and then I will kind of clean up here. And then I would just locate it something like this. And then use some wet tissue, remove any material on here. So you just like water paint. All the remove all the tissues to class. Then be sure on your point. <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, put it back, yeah, put it down. Otherwise, it'll pop up. And on the other side too. Uh, this 
Oh, I think that's it now. It's like spreading cream on a cake. That's good, and spread on the other side. Are you reserve a spot before you yesterday or day before? Uh, no. uh, so would you do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 그러니까 월요일에 하루 저는 토요일이 아니고 금요일이에요. 오케이, okay, that's good. And then use clamps. And then squeeze this one first. And then squeeze it. And when you do that, instead of doing clockwise, I would do crossway first and another corner and cross it. And squeeze it with your finger, okay, and then
And if you have your, if you have some glue on your clothes, it is okay, but wash it immediately with water. It will just go out. But once it is dry, it's almost impossible to take it out. Should we make it as light as possible? With your hands, yes. Good and Just as many as paper towel you want. I think that's good enough. Would you put back this one on a, 이거 저기 다 정리 좀 해줄래요? 네. <웃음> 이거 부러지나? 아, 네. 그럼 그냥 요, 그냥. <웃음> 이거 빠졌나? 어디 갔지? 헤드가? 네, 여기다 꽂아놓습니다. 그리고 이제 나머지는 다 버리도록 합시다. 뭐 남은 거는 네, 오늘 다음에 이제 와서 이걸로 만들면 돼요. <웃음> 네, 그래서 오늘은 여기까지예요. 네. 네, 그래서 수고하셨습니다. 네, 수고 많았어요. 네. Okay, so that's it for today, and then we'll continue the CNC, and then let's just take a look at it quickly. So it's just kind of cut out like stepwise. So it just looks like it's just a CNC simulation. So we'll continue on. Okay, so see you on Wednesday.